say this, but the season's on the line right here. You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Fourgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. It's a tough evening here in College Park. Maryland cannot get it done against Rutgers. They lose 31-17. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne, that's Mason. Bruce is away from the camera this afternoon. The Terps certainly had shots to do it today. They needed this win in order to be bowl eligible, in our opinion. It's not exactly over yet, but with games against Iowa and Penn State, Maryland have to win both games to be bowl eligible. It's going to be tough at four and six right now. Mason, what did you see today? Yeah, a lot of times where the ball got moved down into a scoring area and they couldn't do anything to cash in on that. And it's just ugly. It's ugly all the way around. There's too many times that we've been sitting here in November in the cold and we're not even close. So, uh, Rutgers celebrating to our left as they now are bowl eligible. Maryland has more first downs than Rutgers. Maryland has more yards than Rutgers. But Maryland does not have more points than Rutgers. Um, it, it seems like the team cannot make the decisive play to put these drives away, uh, to get the other team off the field when they need to. It's a lack of what we call explosive plays. Uh, take a look at the happiness over here. And back to the more glum area over this way. I, I don't know how many times you have the same press conference, uh, same post game show, the same look to a game. Uh, you said being a Maryland fan and followers a bit painful this many years. It, it certainly is. And what I would have asked you before is did you see anything good out there? But I think I've learned my lesson. But I'll ask anyhow did you see anything good out there? No, I thought the scheme was atrocious, especially on defense. You're playing against a team that does not have a great offensive line, uh, a very serviceable one, but you were trying to bring six, seven guys. It wasn't getting there. You didn't do anything to change it. This offensive line is flat out atrocious at this point. I mean, they, they just cannot block. Their win rate's awful. They didn't do anything to kind of extend the run game outside. They didn't do anything to take away the single high safety. It's a team that has NFL wide receivers on both sides and at some point you just have to say we're taking a five step drop, we're throwing the ball 40 yards out there and KP you gotta make a play man. Ty Felton you gotta make a play. You guys are top of the leaderboard Big Ten Conference wide receivers. We need those plays, you gotta force the team to back out of what they're doing but the calls just aren't there. Uh, maybe I'm missing something at this point but I don't see it. The 50-50 ball throwing has just not been a part of Mike Oxley's offense in his time here as head coach of Maryland. Well, Maryland does throw the ball down the sidelines early, and it didn't work. Uh, and over to our left, Caden Prather almost had a spectacular touchdown. Prather to our right, Smith, and then Truth Knotts all the way to our left. As the celebration continues to roll on here, the, the one or two innovative plays come out of that turtle push formation. They had a gorgeous play. They threw the ball to Roman Hemby, almost got a touchdown. And then you put in that heavy jumbo look with a fullback and you just drive Rutgers back in the end zone as that play happened. I said, Man, you could use this in a real football situation because what you're doing isn't consistent enough to work. Here comes the turtle push. Tyshay Johnson, DJ Samuel come in. And it might even be Kellen Wyatt. It is. Well, this great mix of offense and defense with the fullback. This this is a fantastic look. Here comes Tyshay in motion. Hands off. Touchdown. You know, I've said this before. You might want to try that in a situation where it is not a damn goal. And that play could work in real football. So Terp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, 
you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jack Litch Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1. But as you know, Coach, it's not the last win, it's the next win that's so important. And that's why we continue to hustle, continue to work so hard for all of our clients to earn that name, the Big Dogs from the Small Firm. Just like you do. You get your guys hustling all the time. That's why we love you, Rick. And most of all, Go, go Terps! Terps. Viner X is the new face of Viner Four Gates. Tech support fuels your business growth. Making your company work is our number one priority. Viner X is here to make your company work. Call us at 877-797-8776 or send us an email, servicedesk at vinerx.com. It's hard to be down on Billy. The accuracy might not be there. He still goes for a ton of yards. I think he's the fifth yardage uh, quarterback in the NCAA yeah. football. I watched it. And yet the throws just really weren't on time today. The ball still batted in the air. I'm going to attribute most of that to the offensive line, not as much on Billy. He is just, he's getting pummeled play after play. Uh, you mentioned that Maryland could not get home. There was one sack in the game, Rutgers sacked Billy. Maryland has zero sacks, could not get to the quarterback. And for a while it seemed like Calicamakis could make every throw ever invented. He looked like a combination of Patrick Mahomes and Joe Montana. They made play after play. They're wide receivers who look fantastic. They had well, we make them look fantastic. I mean, at some point, every team can't have their best game against you, and you'd say that their guy is, is great. Look, but I, that's us. That's I, where we're at. I've watched enough more Turgeon press conferences to know to say the other team was terrific tonight. Uh, they, they are living their dream. But, yeah. In all seriousness, I mean, we've taken this away from them, what, three years in a row? Yeah. And, and they finally get us for one so congratulations to Rutgers. They, they live in an equal amount of pain as we do, so. Uh, yes, congratulations uh, to On the Banks of the Raritan. I saw a Rutgers t-shirt this afternoon that said 1869 National Champions, 1896, something like that. Um, at some level, this has gotten to the point where even I'm not overly upset. It's no. just the way it is. No, I, the thing, it, it's really similar to last night's game. The only real thing that starts to get to you is after you see the same thing over and over and over again. It's just the lack of execution and seemingly the lack of, you would have to point to coaching, of just not being able to get these guys to get better throughout the season. What I saw on the field today didn't look that much different than standing here in September when we were really you know, upset and angry about that Michigan State game. The only difference is your quarterback's so beat up right now, he's not effective at all. And even as a coach at some point, you gotta look at the other guy. If you're not 100%, is your 70% better than the next guy's 100? Lord only knows. It, it is what it is. It's a four and six team that's probably gonna end up four and eight. We have Iowa at 12 o'clock, and as we were walking down to the field, 
said it's about 100 days to lacrosse season. And that's what we have to look forward to. Uh, this postgame show is going nowhere, so we'll wrap it up. Thanks to Viner Forgates. You saw the ad earlier as we transition to Viner X. Of course, to Rick Jacklich. Uh, 3117. We'll be back out here next week. Well, we'll see you after Canisius on Tuesday in the basketball court. We'll be back next Saturday as Maryland hosts Iowa. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night from College Park.